Hello and welcome to another Pinch Tune YouTube video. My name is Danny Cruz. I go by Pinch Tune in the FPV community. And first of all, I want to thank all of you that subscribed to my channel over the last three weeks. I think it was like over 100 of you. And I know that by YouTube tech standards, that is not a lot. But in a small, tiny niche like FPV flying and drones, that is actually very good. And I'm very, very happy about it. So thank you. And today we're going to talk about MMCX connectors and UFL connectors in relation to analog VTXs, but most importantly to the DJI digital FPV system. I personally really like MMCX connectors. I've been using them for a very long time. Uh, I like the fact that the mating cycles are actually quite a bit larger than on UFL connectors. The UFL connectors, which are these tiny ones, they tend to go bad if you plug them in and unplug them too many times. Don't quote me, but I think the mating cycles on these are either 20 or 25, where these is like in the hundreds, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, however, there are some big downsides to the MMCX connectors. The main thing is that they're actually big. They don't look very big, but when you are in a tight build, they become a real problem because just because of millimeters, you sometimes cannot fit them. And on top of that, even though these tend to come out if you don't have good stress relief in a crash, for example, the MMCX connectors tend to rip, which is even worse. That's the reason a lot of people hate them because if they started using them in a setup where the stress relief of the antenna wasn't good enough and they break them, it kind of damages not only this, but it damages the jack as well because now you have a big old prong stuck inside and you kind of have to just remove it, which normally damages it. So you have to replace the entire jack, which is a bit of a chore. But like I said, I've liked the, I like them a lot. I've been using them for quite a couple of years. And when you have a small VTX, for example, this TBS race two, in relation to say the older race VTX, which is this guy, you can see that the size is well, you know, considerably smaller. And there are also a couple MMCX connector VTXs, which are even smaller. When you have a build like my main freestyle build here, which is a Hyperlow RS Plus, this has a lot of space inside. So I can't even fit a big, you know, standard 800 milliwatt uh, full version Unify. But if I fit a small race two like that, which is what's in there, and I route the antenna along the side there, the MMCX connector is just very very comfortable in there and then there's enough stretch release in the antenna that no matter how many times i hit it i might break the antenna but the connector is never going to get any stress so this is the ideal setup and this works for a lot of racers too there's just plenty of space when you use a small vtx like this one which is all good however when we have something like this in this case on uh, in this build i'm using a full 800 milliwatt uh, unify which is a little bigger and i'm routing the wire, the pigtail, around basically like this and to the antenna, kind of like that. Uh, and there is enough stress release. It's not as sturdy as the other one, but it's enough so it's not going to break. And normally, uh, some people hate on UFLs because they come off. Some people hate on MMCX connectors because they break. So who's right? Well, nobody's really right. It's all about how you mount it. If you don't have an optimum way of routing this uh, pigtail, and if you don't have good stress relief, both of the systems are gonna be a problem. And that is where we come into the DJI system. So we all know that the DJI system is based on MMCX connectors for their stock antennas, which are these. Right, and then also DJI sells some pigtails, which use uh, like kind of like this right angle uh, MMCX connectors, so that you can have an SMA at the end and mount the antenna on the SMA. However, here's the thing: this unit is ginormous. It's very big, and I know that Cadex came out with the Vista, and it's the future of the size for this VTX as a 20 by 20, but as far as I'm concerned, at the moment, that system has not be, been proven, and maybe in six months, it will be proven, and we'll have newer 20 by 20 systems, but anyway, right now, what I know works, and works really well, is the big 
large, the large DJ, the original DJI Air unit. And the thing is that it uses MMCX connectors for the antenna. And when you're so tight in space, that is when MMCX connectors become a real frustrating problem. Now, Rush has come up with a new system of putting a lock on their UFLs, and I believe it only works with the jacks on their, the UFL jacks on their VTXs. But if you look closely at the Cadex Vista system, it also uses that same lock. In fact, the Cadex system uses one of these uh, cherry antennas, they call it, and it has an, a UFL on the end and it has a lock on it. I think that that's, that's gonna be ideal, I mean, just, based on experience, I think because it's such a small connector and it has that lock, I think it's gonna be really good. The main problem with the whole MMCX in this thing is that very few manufacturers make a thin enough um, coaxial cable and a small enough jack to really work on these systems. Because for example, let's take a look at this guy. I started trying to figure out a way to hook this guy up, ignore the Russian antenna at the end there, but let's look at the pigtail there. So this pigtail, which is one of these by Race Day Quads, it's at the end there, and then I can connect it at the bottom, but the problem is as soon as I connect it, it just sticks out so much that it's basically gonna rip the MMCX connector in the first crash. And the reason is the MMCX connector doesn't look very big, but look at how long it actually is. It goes all the way here. The metal under the heat shrink goes all the way there. So they're just huge. And then you got one like the one by, um, where is it? Here we go. By TBS, which is the same deal. Look at how big the actual metal is all the way down there. And then you got the right angle. So essentially your connector is this whole thing. So it really becomes an issue when you're trying to fit it somewhere so tight. I tried to put this in there and the way to route the whole thing, it just doesn't work. So I know that the MMCX to RPSMA connectors that DJI sells are good because they have a very thin cable, the connector's small, but they only go out to RPSMA. So you kind of have to use the RPSMA antennas that DJI provides even Lumineer stopped making their RPSMA antennas. And then you can go into adapters, and uh, but when you're in the craft, the least amount of stuff you have, the better, because the least stuff breaks and the less weight, right? So my solution, since none of these things worked, was that I got a hold of the Rush Cherry antennas with the MMCX connector, and check this out. Look at how small the connector is. The metal for it is super tiny. Let's in fact compare it to the one by TBS. Look at that, it's a big difference. And the most important difference is the fact that the wire itself is super thin and super flexible. So that means I can solve the problem of hooking this up and we're routing the whole wire. Remember we got two of these as well and be able to fit the antenna, fit the connector, fit everything in there. And I'll show you right at the end. To make things even better, they provide these mounts and yes, it is not ideal because not all mounts include the holes for the t like the TBS holes like that. See, not all of them do. And for example, this one that's made for the Apex doesn't even have holes because it's meant to be used with one of these. So you start running into that kind of problem, but at least you know that you could either poke holes into this guy to put the screws, or you can design a new 3D print, or somebody else can design a new 3D print. But the point is we can hook that in there, put the two screws in, and then the wire is all loose. So you don't end up breaking the MMCX connector in a crash. Now, you're like, oh, Danny, so then why don't you just go and use the DJI cable and the DJI antennas for two reasons. One. Uh, they're cheap, so that's a good, it's a good price. You get two for 15, so two cables for 15, two antennas for 15, the price is great. But it's heavy because you got a full SMA connector, so I'm trying to skip the whole SMA to SMA. I mean, this thing plus the, the antenna that goes on it adds 10 grams. So 10 grams and 10 grams already got 20 grams in just this. I don't want that kind of weight. This completely eliminates that problem and the weight is very minimal. The other reason is that even though the DJI antenna seem to, you know, um, perform okay, I find that the caps 
are coming off, at least on one of mine. I don't even know where I put it. It just came off. So I'm having a hard time trusting it. But the main, main reason is the fact those SMA connectors are just too heavy. So this is what, I, what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook this on and I am going to show you more or less how it's going to look. All right, so check this out. I finished the little mount. There's uh, it all put together. Uh, the mount is by actually by the TPU is by Brain 3D and is based on the Impulse RC design. However, it's designed to work with these SMAs uh, and not actually TBS SMAs because it's you know it's for a for DJI which uses those. And I actually had to drill the TPU mount in order to fit that kind of mount. And it wasn't easy, it wasn't perfectly straight, but it turned out good because uh, it compresses the TPU to the point where it actually bends the plastic a little bit, which makes it hold the antenna really tight. Uh, I might put some hot glue in there, but I don't think it's necessary, and both of the connectors will end up in the right position, and they're flexible enough to go into the air unit, which is what we're going to do now. So let's see. Um, I think I'm going to connect it after... I um, hook it all up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this guy in, and then after it's hooked in, I'll line them up. It's not easy to do, is it? Sorry, I'm kind of covering the camera there, but I should do the trick. In fact, let me see if I can line up the plugs now. Sorry, it might be kind of dark because the light is uh, pointing elsewhere. Let's see. The one, I might not press them all the way yet. I'm just going to line them up to make sure that this is going to work. Well, that didn't work. All right, I'm actually going to go with the approach of just hooking them up immediately. That way they stay in place. So I'm going to push this guy in first. There we go. Oh, look at that. We already have a problem. These antennas use the very... Let me see. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that, had I? All right, so this is going to be a problem. So let me explain. The connector on the DJI antennas is actually a little bit longer. The diameter of the barrel, I feel, is the same, but this bit here is actually kind of longer. And it's meant, I believe, to put the, the connector, hopefully you can see it here, past this ledge here. So there's a little bit of a lip on the top panel cover of the DJI unit. And this clears it. These short ones, which I believe are the same ones like Lumini uses, do not. But that's only if I put it to where this connector, the actual pigtail, is up. If I put it down or to the side, it shouldn't be a problem. So let me try that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this stand off here and make sure that it's hooked in and kind of like in place before I do the other one because with stuff moving around it makes it that much harder so I hook this one first it doesn't have to be tight but it just needs to be there that way there we go. Okay. so I think I'm onto something now I'll admit I've done easier things so okay that one's all hooked up and maybe I can even wait till the very end to hook this guy up and I do with it with a pair of tweezers so I'm gonna try and do that with like some needle nails so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this guy in to make sure it's in place I might have to take it apart anyway if I can't get it to hook up but we'll get to that point soon enough That's all good, so now we gotta figure out how we are gonna plug in this guy. And I'm gonna use these needle nose pliers. I'm gonna fish this thing in there and get it to hook up. 
I'm probably completely out of the frame, so I'm sorry. I'm not looking at the camera. There we go. That's close enough. All right, let's press it in now. Boom, it's in. All right, so I think actually that's gonna work after all. It's kind of pinching the power wire here. So I hope it doesn't cut it eventually. We'll find out. All right, so let's see what we got here a little bit closer. Let's try and get it to where you can see it. Let me move the camera. All right, as you can see there with the, the M MSCX connectors, inwards like that, it fits without a problem and it doesn't touch that lip at the top. So even if it's a short connector, it's still fine. And it looks really clean. There you go. So that'll that'll work really well. And it, it's nice because it's kind of independent. So it moves around. I mean, time will tell if this is gonna hold, but for sure that is gonna hold up better than that. Because that just pops out, even with the zip tie on it, with the right angle hit. But this is good. I. I don't have any red on the quad, so it looks kind of weird, but it is what it is. All right, so given I'm not very good at leaving well enough alone, I routed the power wires a little bit more to one side so they the MNCX connectors wouldn't pitch them, and that we no chance that they're gonna break, right? And then I covered that with a piece of tape so that the strap wouldn't mess with them either. And as you can see, see how tight that looks in there? So I think I am happy with this. I'm gonna roll with this. I moved it around, jiggled it, and it doesn't seem like they are going to come loose or catch on anything, so I think this is good. Okay, the very last thing we're going to do here is the weight comparison. This is my phone. I shot this yesterday. No straps in the wedge at the front, and it weighed... the heck was that? <laughs> and if we look closely, 397 grams. So it's back up on the scale now, exactly the same setup, props and all, 400 grams. So I'll admit, I'm actually very surprised. Then I only went up 3 grams. I was expecting about 10 grams. So this whole setup, which is way better, only increased 3 grams over using the antennas like that. So I'd say that's a good, good thing. So that's it. That's my solution for the whole DJI MMCX antenna thing. And that's because I am very critical. I want to reduce weight, but I want it to work. I don't want it to break. I, you know, and at the same time, just over engineering, just like do just about everything. But I expect to see more solutions and more antennas like this come out in the near future, based really on necessity. Again, thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and let's see, let's get more done. Uh, this is going very well. So I got more videos in the pipeline. By the way, this is actually a quick video that I'm doing because the others that I'm working on are taking forever. And I don't want to keep you guys waiting. And I thought this was a very good idea. See you in the next one.